Hi everyone, it's Jim from Valves and More, a supplier of quality vintage vacuum tubes. And today we're going to talk about tube testing. In fact, this is part B. In the previous episode, we talked about getting ready to test tubes, cleaning the pins, and today we're going to test EL34s. And these are all the same EL34. Electrically, they're very similar. This is a very modern EL34, very common, electroharmonics, a very good tube. And you can see it's got a number on it. I've actually already tested it. But in a shipment that I just opened up in the previous episode, I got a single Tesla EL34. And it's got a number. It was tested by Peter. Peter's quite good. He tests everything before he ships. Doesn't mean all of his tubes are perfect, but he usually has a good idea that he's sending me something decent. So this is not a reissue Tesla. And this is definitely not the car Tesla, even though they're really cool. This is an original Tesla, I believe. Now, I have somebody might catch me out. I haven't actually researched the tube yet, but I'm looking at it, and the base looks like the historic Tesla. I'm not sure if I have any in stock. One of the things I use is my inventory to check to see if this is in fact the real Tesla, or a reissued Tesla, or a fake Tesla. If I got a new old stock, NOS, new old stock Tesla, and in the box, looking really legitimate, then I could compare this to that. But if I don't, if I'm not certain, I can go online and somebody out there who's a real aficionado of Teslas will have taken a nice picture, maybe even done a write-up about this particular tube. And with those pictures, I can look at it and I can, I'll can i look for the markers. I'll see the, the gray plate boxy structure. I'll look to see, is it welded or tabbed together? In this case, it's welded or soldered. You can see the marks quite clearly. The plate openings are usually a good indication. And the heater arrangement. Oh, here's something that really is a giveaway for this tube. You can see at the top, oh, I'm seeing some white. So when you see white on a tube, that's an indication that the vacuum is broken or it's just started to break. There's not a lot of white up here. Now, Sometimes it's outside the glass, but it's not looking good. So that may require an email to Peter. But up here, here's a, a giveaway. There's two getters, two round rings up here. So this is a double O getter. And what those getters are is just holders. When the tube is made, they hold, they hold I think it's called barium. They hold... Um, an element, and when the tube is first put together and the vacuum is, is created, so the tube is sealed, the tube is heated up in a big inductor of some kind. And that flashes off the stuff in the cups, and that is your silvering. And the silvering draws any last remaining um, gases, oxygen, that are inside the tubes, and it absorbs it and makes it go as a, makes it go away somehow. So, and our last EO34 that we're going to look at. This is an RCA. This is an historic tube. That's probably um, 60 or 70 years old. I haven't done the research on it. I just opened the box a couple of minutes ago, and again, Peter put a number on it. So. How do the testers work? Let's get these tubes out of the road so we don't break something. Let's fire it up with the EL34. This is a speed section in the BNK Model 700. And I happen to know that socket 29 is the EL34. I put a note here. So we need to know the heater voltage of the tube. That's paramount before we turn any tester on. I happen to know that this is a, a 6 volt heater. Most power tubes are 6 volt. Most little signal tubes, not all, but most of them, uh, can either take 6 volts or 12 volts, and most of them run at 12 volts today. 
It just made them more flexible. So here's the heater settings already on six. That's good. I know the socket. And now we want to know the sensitivity. It's 53. Straight in. On it goes. Somewhere around here I have a timer. Normally the timer sits right here. For a power tube, I normally let them warm up for four full minutes before I'll test them. The heater actually is normally up and live within maybe 20 seconds for a big tube like this. Same for a little one like that, but it's not optimum at that point. And if I'm testing a tube to see what its properties are, I really want to know that it's warmed up and ready to go. And in some cases, tubes are showing some reluctance to be tested properly, and I'll warm them up for a second period. But most of the time, three or four minutes is plenty. So, we're over a minute already. And we can start to test this. We're not going to wait the full four minutes. So the first test on this tester is shorts. Shorts in a tube can mean that electrically inside something is broken off or at the factory they made a big mistake and they connected up things the wrong way. Not likely. Broken off happens very occasionally. You might even hear it or something is just leaning over and touching something else. So that could be a short. That's a dead short. But really, a tube tester is looking for what's called a capacitance short. So the short section will test for a dead short, but it's testing for a capacitance short. And what that is, is when two components electrically are coupling with each other, as in a capacitor. I'm not going to go into too many details on that, but just so that you know, if a tube is capacitance shorted, and that's fairly common on older tubes, they are no longer reliable electrically, and you don't want them in your circuit. That's why it's the first test. If it doesn't pass the shorts test, or the grid emission test, then it doesn't go further on the tester. So. We're a minute and a half in, so test number one, I'm coming in at about 83. This is a nominal 83. The nominal theoretical maximum this tube could output with the proper settings is 100 or 100%. The reality is that Good tubes, even brand new good tubes, will output anywhere between 80% and 110% on this tester. And if you test a lot, if I buy a big batch of BL34s, I might buy 20, 50, 100, 200, all at the same time. If you ta test them all, you'll get to know electrically what is a good tube. Now, I've tested a lot of BL34s. It's one of my favorite tubes. And I know from experience that 83 is a really good, it's a good number. That, that's basically a new tube, and it is a new tube. What are the things that I can learn from the tester watch, just watching it with experience? You see how fast the meter brings up to, to, to its full reading? If the meter came up slowly, that's an indication that the tube is getting weak. Now, one of the nice things about this meter is that this tester, so that you have a life test. And this basically reduces the filament voltage in half. That nice orangey glowy thing in there that makes the tube work, that heats it all up, it's now not at 6 volts nominal, it's at 3 volts. And you can see the tube's holding steady at about 88, 87. That's a good indication that the tube is a good strong tube. Okay, so before we take it out, we're going to turn it off. Sometimes they get very hot, so be careful. So that's our first EL34. Let's skip over the Tesla 
And let's go right to this beautiful RCA. That is, I believe, the oldest DL34 I've ever brought in. And let's hope it's good. So while we're doing that, what else can we talk about? Up here are the sections to do small signal tubes with the miniature 9-pin base. And in fact, way up in the corner, you can't even see it, I don't think. Let me see if I can move the tester over a little bit. That's the most common small signal tube socket on this tester. This does 12A T7, which is a little bit lower output than the 12A X7. 12A U7, a very common small signal tube. 12B H7, and actually a whole series of other tubes go through this socket. And you can see I've actually put a socket saver in here. And these sockets can wear out. They're very well made in testers. They're designed for a repeated use, but eventually they wear out. So there's a saver in here, and I'll wear the saver out before I wear out the, the vintage socket. Over here you can see I've put a brand new socket in. This is in the lower section, the switch section, which tests all sorts of odd tubes that can't be done up here in the speed section. Everything here is preset. You just have to plug it in, put a couple of dials, and Bob's your uncle, you're ready to go. Down here, you have to look up... Oh, and that reminds me, we should get the book out. So here we go. Here's the book. So we're doing EL34s right now. We look up an EL34 in here and it would tell us socket 29, 6 volts on the heater, and 53 on the sensitivity. And most tubes are inside the book, but every once in a while I'll be testing a Russian tube or a tube that was built after the tester was made. And I'll create a data sheet for that specific tube. I'll figure out what the parameters are to test it. I'll write them down and then I'll have the parameters. So we've got a couple of minutes on this tube. We test for shorts. There's nothing. Grid emission. Nothing. And here we go. Test one. So I think the previous tube we were at 82 or 83. Here we're at 85. So that this is... This vintage tube is testing stronger than the brand new Electroharmonix. But we looked at it earlier. Let's look at it again. And it looks virtually new. So even though I don't have a box, knowing what I do about vintage tubes, I would I would call this a new old stock tube. It's testing very strong. It looks brand new. It's got most of its print, so this is a true new old stock tube, and I might even have a vintage box for it. If not, I'll find a generic box, and that's a valuable tube. Somebody will really appreciate getting that tube. Okay, I think that's the basics of testing tubes. Well, let's just throw in one of these little guys. So this is a 12AX7. Let's move it over here a bit. In it goes. It's the same procedure. On it goes. I start the timer up. I would do it for three minutes for a small tube like that. It doesn't take long to heat them up. We've got to change the settings. That's 12 volts on the heater. And the sensitivity is 85. Big change. And then the procedure is the same. The 12AX7 is a very modern tube, even relative to the tester. And the test tube was never set up to do them as well as it does other tubes. So when we come along here and we get up to, to test the, the two sections of the tube, you may have noticed that with the power tube, we only have one section in here. In a small dual triode like the 12AX7, we have two tubes inside of one tube. So with a single power tube, we just push test one. But with a dual tube, we have two tests. We set 
we test both sections at the same time, one after the other. So, the specs on the 12AX7 say that if it tests over 22, equal to 22 or greater, that it is good. And it's testing 31 on the first section, and it's testing 30 and a half on the second section. And I know from experience that's a very strong tube. And in fact, it should be because it's a brand new Electro Harmonix. So the sections are close. It's testing really great. And that's all for today, folks. Oh, and if you watch this far, here's a discount code for the store. That's a little reward. And if you have any suggestions on other basic videos on vacuum tubes, testing, um, I think we'll do a couple of episodes on tube amplifiers, the basics of them. And uh, that's it. I'll see you later.